Today, I'm joined by one of the most recognized personalities in the history of the post-evolution of combat game. Known for his theory crafting, reviews, discussions, challenges, real-life videos, tutorials, and boss hunting. He pioneered streaming RuneScape on Twitch and grew one of the largest and most successful communities at the time. Darden, welcome to the show. Hey, man. No, thanks for having me. Absolutely. So we're going to start off with an easy one. What's Darden up to these days? Well, I've been working 40 hours a week as a store manager, and I've been hitting the gym training up my strength level in real life, and that's what I've been mainly doing. Good stuff, and we'll uh, we'll touch on the gym stuff a little later on as well. So uh, let's get right into business here. First off, you recently mentioned you don't play the game as much as you used to. Do you think you've moved on from the game, or do you think the game direction moved away from your interests? Um, I think I moved on from the game. The game direction isn't bad, because like it's still heading a good direction, like with new bosses and stuff weekly content still being released every week which is awesome i just kind of grew out of it don't have a lot of time to keep up with most stuff and probably that's why that's uh that's very refreshing to hear because a lot of the time when you speak to people who aren't very active it's oh i hate the game now the game sucks yeah. no no definitely not that like the updates haven't been as good as they used to though that's Probably a small part. In recent years, the game has been very focused on mid-level content, such as the trilogy of elite dungeons that feature nine new bosses that can be taken out in a slightly challenging solo mode or simply taken out with up to two friends. This lack of endgame challenge has been a frequent point of contention for high-end PVMers and has been cited frequently as a reason for people to move on to other games. On the flip side, elite dungeons are some of the most popular and enjoyable social group content in the game for mid-level players. In your opinion, is there a way to create content that can be enjoyed by all types of players, or does a high-end challenge have to exclude the majority of the player base? Having mid-level or like mid-level tier content, it's good to fill the gaps. But I think at this point, we have had enough mid-level content. Um, I do like the way they did Telos and Arexor. So you start out like mid-tier and you can challenge yourself by doing more in Rage. I think that's a good direction for like having both groups of people satisfied. But I do understand at some point that uh, people like are getting bored of the mid-tier content and are moving away from it. So you'd like to see them come out with a challenge? Yeah. And if they were to come out with a brand new ultra challenging boss with similar mechanics to Telos or Araxor in terms of how the enrage increases, would you rather that be a solo boss or a group encounter? I think group because so far we have had those two bosses, Arex or Antelos, which have increasing rage, and they're both solo. So uh, we have had those two now solo pretty much. So a group boss will be like really challenging for groups of people, like Virago probably. Enrage Virago, like that will be fun. And yeah, group enrage is something that they haven't actually touched on. And yeah. that would be a very interesting set of different aspects of the game and different mechanics they could implement. As you do more kills with your duo partner, the different mechanics could change. So that's very, uh, very interesting and actually something I would definitely like to see as well. Yeah, they have, like with the EOC, there's so much ability now they can discover more and more. It's time to do some digging. You and Wooks teamed up on several occasions after the Evolution of Combat release to attempt things that had never been done before, like your next duo without food in 2012. Were there any PVM challenges you attempted that maybe didn't quite go as planned? Um, nope. The, the ones that did go as planned, I probably uploaded them all, which weren't as much as nowadays, but I didn't really try any crazier stuff than the th stuff that I uploaded. So everything you tried, you succeeded on, pretty much? Pretty much, yeah. Very impressive track record. I uh, wish I could say the same. If you look at nowadays, it's like nothing compared to back then, but for then, like, just still figuring out EUC and all that stuff was really fun. I think any PVM accomplishment, you have to look at the time period as well. And when when you guys were in your heyday accomplishing these things, they were things that no one expected to be doable and possible. And you were one of the people who was pushing the bounds on, on what was doable. And obviously a lot of those things now, you can see people doing them all the time. It's not a big deal, but I don't think that takes away from how incredible a lot of your, uh, your accomplishments and feats were back then for the time period they were in. Yeah, exactly. For the time being, like, do a Virago back then uh, was a big thing, and now it's not as big anymore. The saying, you never really quit RuneScape, you just take breaks, applies to a number of people. Can you recount a time when you almost quit the game for good, and what maybe made you come back? 
Um, well, this is, I mean, I still actually haven't quit. So if people think that I've quit now, I still log in pretty much every day. But um, the one time I really thought about quitting was ages ago. This is like 2008, back when I still was like a newbie. I had full Guffins, Arams, and Derek's in my inventory. And I was at Fight Pits at the Tsar, uh, just screwing around with some friends. Uh, well, he went AFK for a bit, so I waited on him. But I waited outside and I attacked some of the Tsar monsters. And I tried to get my Derok HP really low, so I can hit the highest hits with Deroks. But I accidentally attacked the wrong monster and killed myself, the one who used range instead of melee. Back then there were no graveyard uh, gravestones, so like you, if you died, within a minute the loot became available to everybody. So I tried to run back, but I couldn't make it on time and I lost pretty much all my stuff. This was when Derox was like 5 million and that was pretty much my bank. And yeah, I really was pissed off with myself and I quit it for like three days and then I came back. But that was the only time I really quit. Three days and then back again. Yeah. Other than that, I never really have quit even to this day. I know it was a long time ago, but if you remember, did you enjoy the rebuilding process after you'd gotten over being upset about losing your bank? Personally for me, after I got lured from my entire bank, that was the most fun I'd ever had in the game. I launched a series called Road to Rebuild, and it was pretty much me learning how to PVM and me making up that amount of money in six or seven weeks. So I lost a Divine Spirit Shield during a quest of Ridge of the Marjorat. And back then, when it came out, everybody was doing the quest, and it was a pretty tough boss fight. And if you died, uh, you grave spawned outside and loads of people died where there were like 1 billion graves on top of each other. And because of that, I couldn't loot my items from the grave. So I lost my divine because of that. And ever since then, I started a series called Road to Divine where I did PVM to uh, get the divine spirit shield back. And it was m the most fun I ever had as well. And I enjoyed making the series. So like rebuilding is always a a lot of fun. Having other people's deaths stopping you from being able to die. Pretty good thing that that system does not exist anymore. Well, I complained like enough to actually get it uh, changed. It happened a couple more times later on, <laughs> but I didn't lose the divine. I lost like small stuff, like um, 200 mil worth, but it happened three times in total. And after that, they actually started looking into changing how graves work. So you're taking partial credit for, uh, for getting that system change. Yeah, partially. Would you ever consider a full return to Twitch? And if not, why not? Uh, I'd consider it if I do have a bit more time on my hands. Because right now with 40 hours a week of work and 20 hours a week, or well, almost 20 hours at the gym, I'm actually there like for like 12 to 16 hours a week. Um, I definitely consider it if I have a bit more time on my hands. And... Just when the time is right, honestly, and if RuneScape does come out with some really sick updates in the near future, I definitely want to come back and I consider streaming if I am 100% certain I won't stop taking a break again. So that's probably the only reason if I would come back. We uh, we spoke about that off camera or off, uh, off the record a little bit earlier on and you talked a little bit about expectations of you as a streamer and why you don't return for a short period of time or just go live for an hour every week or two. Yeah, so if I were to stream right now like once a week or a month, then I probably like won't have the time or motivation to start streaming again like months later. And then it will just give out false hope to people who actually do enjoy uh, watching me or like listening to me again. So I really not have that false hope uh, given to people unless I'm 100% certain I am going to do this for the long time again, like I used to. Absolutely. And you never want to feel like you're letting anybody down. And that's yeah, very yeah, crucial exactly. as a content creator. And it's something that a lot of people don't show that restraint and they feel like they uh, they start streaming and it's not necessarily a bad thing, but they can go full time for two weeks and then they disappear for another month. That's clear yeah, and then people are going to wonder that. like what happened to you? Did you die? Or like they, they will be probably disappointed most of the times so, or oh, you just came back and now you quit again. And Everyone knows how that feels to uh, be on the receiving end of and it's not very nice. So it's absolutely commendable that you're doing that. At the same time, if you had a way to clearly outline the expectations and say, I'm going to be going live one time every month or one time every two months for three, four hours just to PVM or do some skilling or something else, and you had a feeling that people would understand that properly, do you think you would ever consider returning just under that short, short window, under that little umbrella of very infrequent streams, no expectations? Damn, probably, yeah, with the right content being released, so... 
Hopefully, rates too, maybe. <laughs> Alrighty. If so, the uh, update is good enough. Darden return incoming? Make sure to pressure him. No, don't do that at all. And I'm sure there would be a lot of content creators who'd be uh, interested in collaborating with you or speaking with you or having you as a guest on their streams as well. And that could be a good way to feel like you're still a part of the community and still get to speak to the people who are interested in catching up with you while not having any of those assigned expectations. Let's talk about the game. In 2013, you expressed concern that the defensive abilities were becoming too strong with the release of Devotion. In 2019 RuneScape, defensive abilities are more powerful than ever before, with things like a thousand percent enraged Talus with no food being completed multiple times in a row by some players. There are two players to date who've recently completed 4,000% enraged Telos without food. Is this a case of highly skilled players pushing the limits on the combat system, or are defensive abilities like Resonance and Devotion too powerful for the low cost of use? I think it's a bit of both. Like, it's not something that everyone just can bulk and straight up do it. It's definitely requiring some skill, but I think it's fine as long as you're, like, taking the time to learn it and your kills aren't faster anyway, so... I think it's not as bad. I tend to agree with you. And a lot of people recently have been talking about defensive abilities and their usage and how you can pretty much no food any boss encounter in the game. I believe Duo Hard Mode Virago has even been no fooded at this point, just with use of Heal Other as well as all the other defensive abilities in the rotation. Yeah, but you're probably looking at having a decreased skill speed. So, like, you have to look at that as well. It's not something really viable, like no, not everybody's gonna do every kill A no food kill uh, by just using defensives the whole time. So in your eyes, it's not the end of the world so long as it's not the meta. If the meta was yeah, to make exactly. two bosses, that would be a big problem. Exactly. Got if it. it would have the same time speed, kill speed as just normally, then that would be a problem. While we're talking about people accomplishing incredible things within the combat system, I'd like to talk about Virago. You were a member of the first team to ever defeat him. At the time, did you ever expect to see people duoing both normal and hard mode? And do you feel this is a result of power creep, better strategies, or a bit of both? I know when Virago was first released, a lot of the strategies were unknown, and the knowledge people have on pushback and stall is way more advanced than it ever was in the past. Um, it's definitely a mixture of both as well, because over time you will get new weapons, abilities, armors, scream shells everything whatnot so like i definitely think that you shouldn't ever exclude like this being not soluble or doable i mean obviously soluble like rogue is never gonna happen just yeah, so because you still need the two people but yeah never exclude anything when when it comes out if it seems like really op in the beginning over time people are gonna find better strategies better armor will come out we still haven't kept at 99 who knows if it ever is gonna cap at 99 that's why i never say never basically you used to host weekly pvm challenges uh, that your youtube viewers could compete in in these challenges you'd outline a set of rules and the top three times would be featured in a future video on a personal note these challenges got me interested in pvming and my best time placed me fourth in the polypore staff troll invasion contest why was it important for you to create custom challenges that didn't have high gear requirements uh, it was important so that everybody could join in on the fun and on the uh, experience so like it's not locked between having the highest tier of armor or stuff like that so that's why it was important so everybody could participate in that's a uh, that's a great mindset and a really good community oriented one as well for me personally i would not have been able to participate and i would not have started pvming without those challenges and being able to try and participate and even learn a little bit too in a very community oriented way is something that I feel the game has missed in the last little bit and something I'd love to see someone make a spin-off of or a return on. I mean, you could probably start doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I guess I could, but I can, it's, it's your thing. Yeah, or like they, I, know, I think if they add some sort of high score that will be on like officially on the RuneScape website, that would be fun as well. So kind of like seasonals, but like non yeah, exactly. seasonals? So like, yeah, yeah. So I think they have achievements for them in game, right? Like kill this or that without this armor, then you unlock the achievement. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so they probably could turn that into a high score, which can everybody see. So that should be like a good idea for Jagex. And if they were to do something like that, you'd like them to limit the gear you had. So for example, there's yeah, an exactly. achievement that has you do full, uh, finish off a Rex or with full bronze and a bronze dagger. You'd like to see more yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, exactly. On the seasonal, that would be like, a good starting point for Jags to start uh, allowing players to challenge their skills. Yeah, I, I, I completely agree with you. And that's something that I know a lot of people appreciated about your content. Even though a lot of the time you were doing very high level end game related things, you tried to keep everything as accessible as possible. Many people feel that learning PVM is very inaccessible. 
and I generally recommend that players join a clan of like-minded players and learn with them. Personally, I learned Angel of Death by finding a set of people who also had no idea how to do it, and after a lot of dying and practicing and fun times, we managed to get our first kills. How important would you say a PVM clan like Decimus was for your ascension to PVM mastery? Um, I mainly made the clan actually for like friends and just other people to have a shot at going to bosses. Because I always had a group of friends that I could go and PVM with. So that wasn't really the issue, but I mainly made it for other people to have the opportunity to find teams quicker and just like having a community. So for me personally, like it wasn't necessary for my mastery of PVM, but it was more for the growing community that could help each other out. For the people coming up. And do you still yeah. feel like a clan is a good place to go or a good place to look for the people who are always like, I can't get on a raid team without 10 kill count and I need that 10 kill count. I want to go to Virago, but I don't have friends to go with. Would you still say that's one of the better ways to go about it? Or should people be looking elsewhere at this point? No, that's probably the best part about a clan, so you can learn and help out like fellow clan members. And that's probably the easiest way to join a clan and find people who like are probably around the same level as well and want to learn and like get better. Your early videos are interesting gameplay put to music with the occasional post commentary. What made you decide to start doing commentaries and do you think you benefited from coming out of your shell and interacting with your community in a more personal way? This could be a benefit in your personal life, in your actual content and RuneScape itself, or anything in between? Um, I started doing commentaries because I, back then I used to make quite a lot of guides and it, they basically were written guides, but at some point you like want to tell more and having a lot of text on the screen just was really annoying for most people. And with commentaries, I could like speak up more and just tell more like how you do it and go into much detail. So that's why I mainly started commentaries and it definitely helped out with building community because then people actually know a voice behind the videos. And it definitely helped me as well in real life because my English definitely did get improved. <laughs> as you can notice now, like I haven't been talking like proper English in like two years. And like when I used to do it every day, it was so much easier than now or like when I was younger. So it definitely helped out a lot. And obviously building community, uh, getting on teams, be good people. Uh, just doing like stuff with people is a lot more fun with voice. So the social aspect helped you in real life and also definitely helped you in terms of success on both YouTube and Twitch. If there are people who have aspirations to be a content creator in the future, but they currently are shy or don't use a microphone or feel like they have bad English, what advice would you give to those people? I'd really suggest on starting to learn and just try it i mean there's always going to people hate you at the beginning like oh your english is really bad which i did have in the beginning but eventually if you just keep sticking to it and you're you practice more and more then you will become better at speaking it and there's just a lot more people who will take you more like seriously if you start talking and just they want to listen to you basically they want to know what you think about this part or this part of the game and so definitely like do that and you need to come out of the shell and just practice so let's talk about your background as a pvmer en route to the insane final boss title you went through over 2000 queen black dragon kills how do you feel about spending nine and a half hours watching the infamous waking up cutscene and in your opinion, oh, yeah. <laughs> is a time game like that a good system to fight power creep affecting kill times? Or would you prefer a different way of accomplishing this? I'd prefer a different way because that's like literally just how, ma how many seconds is it? 13 or 14? 17 four? seconds each time. 17, yeah. I think that has no point. You can, I mean, there's better ways for introducing a like a time restriction on bosses like that. That's basically just waiting at the screen until like she wakes up. I think there are better ways at uh, doing stuff to stop increasing the kill speed, like give it more life points or stuff like that, instead of just waiting. There was actually recently debate about Jagex removing that cutscene, and the reason they left it as is was to keep the drop values high for mid-level players that the boss is designed for. As it marginally, obviously, if, if you're doing a Queen Black Dragon kill in 45 seconds, that's a third of your kill speed wasted. Whereas if you're a slower player getting three minute kills, it's a lot less significant. What do you think about that as a way to keep drop values high for a lower level player? That's probably the good thing about it. But on the other hand, like I said, I will probably just give it more life points. I think that's, I don't know, for everybody probably better. I know if people's going to hate it and begin, but in the end, like if you are a bit more skilled, you can still get a faster time. But for those who aren't as skilled and have don't have the best 
equipment, they still have a chance as well at getting the better time eventually. Fair enough. Great insight. In your 2015 bank video, you talk about saving your techie for raids too. It's been over four years and still no word of a sequel to Beastmaster and Yakamaru. This is obviously something you'd like to see happen, but my question is this. If they released Raids 2 in 2020, would you consider returning to RuneScape, Twitch, and or YouTube to play with that content? Or has it been too long to entice you back into PVMing on the game? As of right now, I have no plans of really coming back, even if Raids 2 came out. I've been just too long out of it. I still log in and do my like AFK skills and stuff like that. But as for PVM, I don't know if I get more free time on my hands and if the update is really good and just a lot of new content gets added, not just like a monster or two. I'm talking about like four or five with really cool rewards and tradable rewards as well. Then maybe, but for now, I'm not really interested in coming back if they just release rates to two with two bosses or something. You just mentioned untradeable rewards, and we're going to go back to that right now. When bonds were released, you mentioned that you hoped Jagex would make more untradeable gear and make it the most useful gear in the game to minimize the unfair advantage a player could gain with in real life money. In the years since this update, this hasn't really happened without a single relevant best in slot untradeable item being added to the game since that date. Do you still feel that untradeable best in slot gear is the best way to reduce the effect of microtransactions? I always liked a mix of both. So let's say there is a boss which comes out and it has two pieces, one untradeable and one tradable. So you still need the tradable piece and you still need to do the content yourself for getting the untradable piece. It's probably a bit of both worlds. So you can still earn money as well from it and still have done the content in order to get the best in slot gear. So in your eyes, that would be a happy medium for less intrusive microtransactions. Have a split where the players that want an advantage can get that advantage but they can't be fully maxed, fully best in slot, or completely defeat the purpose of filling out game content. Yeah, exactly. To me, that's a great way to incentivize people PVMing, as if you want to get the best stuff, you will still need to PVM for it, but you can definitely give yourself a helping hand via MTX, which is what Jagex wants. Yeah, exactly. Well, I don't know if they want you to buy like the best slotting gear by, through MTX, but... As the game currently <laughs> stands, pretty much everything in the game, the only best in slot item since you made that comment in 2013 that's been added to the game is uh, the Asylum Surgeon's Ring. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's probably why they don't really release uh, untradeable stuff like that, because, yeah, it doesn't help with the microtransactions. In 2014, you infamously leaked your password on stream, and as a result, you lost your player moderator status. Although we'll keep the specifics of the situation in the past, do you feel that anybody treated you differently after losing your status? Uh, well, at the beginning, everybody obviously trolled me, <laughs> Of course. but, uh, people didn't really treat me differently. So, I mean, before I was a PMO, people still like used to flame me and stuff like that. And after I lost it, they still were like flaming me. So it definitely <laughs> didn't really change. That's, uh, that's really good to hear. I know a lot of people talk about, oh, I want to be a player moderator one day or imagine being a player moderator. And the first rule of being a player moderator is that you're a player first. And it's good to see that you were treated as one either way, whether you were a player moderator or you weren't. I think like for the average person who doesn't know you and they see a crown in game, they're not as quick to like start flaming you. But if the people know you, they are obviously like quicker to flame you because yeah, uh, they know you. An average player probably won't like straight up start insulting a PMOD. So it's pretty much banter. Yeah, pretty much banter, yeah. Outside of that, being a player moderator to you isn't a super big deal in terms of how it actually affects you as a person or your gameplay. No, exactly. I mean, I, it did suck when I lost in the beginning, but over time, like, I really actually didn't mind at all. Because, yeah, like, some people would probably suck up to you as well when you're PMOD, and when you don't have that status anymore, they just act normal around you. You mentioned IRL strength training a little earlier on in the show. With frequent progress yeah. pictures from your Twitter feed, fitness clearly plays a large role in your life. Can you talk me through how you got into it and what advice would you give to someone who is just getting started or interested in getting into shape? Yeah, sure. So around two and a half years ago, I was pretty much overweight like all my life. I'm 26 now and I've been overweight since I was five. So 21 years. Like I was really sick of it. And one day I just was watching YouTube and I just randomly stumbled on this video of a guy called obese to beast is a YouTuber who was like 300 pounds and he's like 180 now and he lost all the weight. And 
I started watching his videos and he was a really inspiration to me. So from that video, I started up looking more and more stuff about eating healthy, exercising, just like the right stuff. Two and a half years later, I'm like 20 kilograms lighter now. So, and I'm loving it. Wow. And as for starting out, I definitely recommend starting looking at videos because knowledge is power. Uh, you can get like a personal trainer and stuff like that, but usually stuff like that only is short term for like if you have a three month plan with a trainer like you do that for three months but you need to like learn yourself because in the end you're be going to be the one doing the work uh you know what to eat and why you eat it and stuff like that so definitely look up some videos on youtube uh, for exercises and like how food works and the macros and don't give up that's uh that's really inspiring that you're able to do that and it's uh, it's very cool to see as a lot of people don't take their fitness and their health first or don't prioritize it, especially in a gaming space where gamers have this reputation of not taking care of their body and pulling long gaming sessions at a time without yeah, taking care of themselves. So it's really good to see your transformation. It's very inspiring to a lot of others who may be in a similar situation to what you were a couple of years ago. Yeah, and you don't have to give up gaming for that either, by the way. Like, even though I don't play as much as I used to, I still do play and I still, like, am on my computer quite a lot of times. But, uh, like, I see, like, Bodhi as well. Like, he's really fit and he streams a lot of hours. So you, you can do both. Like, it's not one of the other as well. You could say it's about finding the right balance. Yeah, exactly. Well, that's, uh, that's all the questions I had for you. I really appreciate you coming on, and it means a lot. As one of the people who inspired me to start PVMing, without your content, your videos, there's no way I would have PVMed at any point, and there's a very high likeliness I would not be doing what I'm doing right now, today, or in my life. Streaming has become my full-time job, and you're one of the people who completely pioneered PVM-related streams, community-orientated streams, and that's something that... I will always absolutely appreciate and respect you for. Oh, wow. That's awesome to hear, dude. And <laughs> that's why I do like, do, did what I like back then because it inspired people. So like, awesome to hear that, man. And you're doing a great job at it. So just keep doing what you're doing and yeah, good luck. I appreciate that. Thanks for coming on. After the show ended, I had the chance to talk to Darden about the incoming comp cape rework and he had some really interesting insight that I'm going to play right now. People always got to complain about something. Always got. That's why I like. That's why I like. I do like the update to Comp Cave so that uh, people are gonna stop complaining. Cause if it's gonna be like tier three, you need the PVM stuff. You can still get the tier one by just doing the easy stuff in tier two. I'm hoping that's a byproduct as well. People are very aggressive and territorial with their Comp Cave stuff. You you touch yeah. them and people are <laughs> yelling. I'm gonna go. I work so hard for it. Bitch, I understand working hard for it, but. There are so many flaws with the comp cape, and I feel like you need to be fairly, fairly crazy to like not see any of the problems with it and only see like, I worked for this, so I deserve this. Yeah, so that's how this. people see it though. Like they just see it as I worked hard for it and I did it, so you have to do it as well. Like if I start saying that as well, like I'm going to fucking complain about skills being too easy because I had to get 99 agility on the fucking Aptol dungeon uh, or the, the Aptol course. Dude, <laughs> I, I got 99 agility with 40k XP an hour. You have, you have to be open-minded and think about the long term of the game and not just because you did it and it was a ton of fun like an exciting new way of how you did combat oh um, and congrats i just i just i just Wait. sniped your greg pet is that my, is um, that a pet that is that is the that is the greg pet i i uh, oh my god dude i just sniped your greg pet nice yeah i need to do more dps man like yeah, step it up. Well, where's, where's your five tick auto yeah. cleaving? Come on, man. I mean, <laughs> I, I haven't done any PVM in two years, so I'm still rusty, man. So, My knock south is rusty as well. The, the funny thing about that for me is I recently had an insane final boss series. Don't worry, the interview is about you, but I recently put it on hold. I canned the series because I went six months without a pet. And, uh, Six? Yep. Since canning that series... How, how is that possible? <laughs> uh, check That's my Yaka pet kill count. <laughs> Wow. How many more do you need? Uh, I, I still have, I don't have Vit yet, so that's the big one. But other than that, I've got yeah. most of the hard ones. Um, I go six months without a pet, I can the series, and then within three weeks of that, I've now had three pets. 
So, wow. uh, <laughs> yeah, there we go. Guess I guess I gotta get another episode ready. Uh, you have to start getting on on that uh, hype train again of IFB. Yeah. Well, uh, thanks for uh, thanks for suggesting, Greg. All right, back to the <laughs> question. <laughs> no problem. Mm -hmm.